Hey there, Explorer! The following program was brought to you by Team Neutrino in association with the Ames Public Library. Team Neutrino is a first robotics team based out of Story County. We've been helping students build awesome robots for over 10 years. First Robotics offers exciting robotics opportunities for students of all ages, from pre-K all the way through grade 12. Many local elementary schools in Story County offer First Lego League, a program which teaches robotics basics. Lego League is a great way to get involved with robotics and a fantastic STEM activity we hope you participate in this school year. You might even have some fun building Lego robots along the way. Ask a trusted adult or teacher to help you join a team today at www.firstinspires.org. That's www.firstinspires.org. But for now, sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, and enjoy the show. My name is Laura Lee, and I'm a senior robotics student with Team Neutrino. Over our next few weeks together, we'll be exploring fun and engaging science, technology, engineering, art, and math opportunities that you can enjoy right here in the Story County community. Each episode of our show will highlight unique science fields, explore local opportunities anyone can enjoy, and provide you with fun activities to do from home. In this episode of Full Steam Ahead, we'll be exploring the arts and how you can decorate your own paper craft. We're here at the Octagon Center for the Arts near the Ames Public Library in downtown Ames to see what we can learn. Let's take a look inside! The Octagon is a center for the arts which opened here in Ames over 50 years ago. From demonstrations to expert-led classes, the Octagon strives to let people of all ages experience art. We're standing here in the main art gallery. This is where a lot of fun events are held. You can visit things like artist talks and art showcases for free with a trusted adult. Before we head upstairs to learn from one of these artists, let's explore a little bit about how we experience art. Graphic design is all about creating something visually appealing that informs the viewer. This sounds pretty simple, but there's actually a lot of science behind why we like what we like. This is psychology, and it's the study of why our brains behave the way they do. Artists use different elements and principles of design to influence how we feel about their art, and use it to send a message. Sometimes this message is a warm feeling, and sometimes art is meant to be sad. Let's look at some art with these messages here in the main art gallery. The first trick artists use to make art that people identify with is association. If an artist creates a painting of a flower, and you already have fond memories of flowers, you're more likely to enjoy this painting. This is because your brain associates the familiar image with other memories to make you feel more positively about the painting. The second thing artists use to make art is pattern. Our brains are constantly looking to complete patterns. We like it when things line up just right. Artists use things like symmetry to create patterns for our brain to find. Symmetry is something is the same on both sides. Artists use lines to create all sorts of fun patterns for us to find. In fact, sometimes not having a pattern is a focal point, like in abstract art. The third element of design artists use to influence us is color. When we experience colors, our brains actually release different hormones, which affect our emotions differently. This is why red is often used to portray negative emotions, and lighter colors are used to make us feel more positive. Different color schemes combine different colors to make us feel various emotions. These elements are great to keep in mind when doing anything creative in art. They can give us ideas and help the design resonate with the audience. Now that we've learned about the psychology behind art, let's head upstairs to try out some design for our own. I 
I'm here with Tim Reed, the owner of Five Fingers Creative, a local design and illustration studio. Tim is a kids illustrator, doing everything from children's books to many local heroes. We're here today at his Silly Monsters art class, one of the many awesome classes here at the Octagon. Can you tell us a little bit about your class that you did today? Well, my very Silly Monster class is designed to give kids up to you to uh, be creative and use your imagination while drawing very silly monsters which are based on my line of kids books. So we kind of explored things like shapes and colors and numbers and, and uh, ways that we can see those things in a creative way. What important skills does your class teach these children? Well, like I said, what we, what we do is we give them an opportunity to look at things in a different, in a different way um, by using their imagination and developing a creative approach to turn those things into silly monsters or uh, whatever they may like to draw the time. Uh, it, it does give kids an opportunity to um, learn basic drawing skills um, in regards to like how shapes can really form things outside of just being shapes. That sounds wonderful. How can kids get involved in classes like yours? Well, it's really easy actually. You just go to the um, Octagon website and uh, and, or call the Octagon in Ames directly and we'll give you a list of all the kids' classes coming up. Um, and a couple times a year I get the opportunity to teach, but there's a whole gamut of classes out there for kids. Why do you think it's important for kids in Story County to be involved in art like this? Creative is such a, being creative is such an important part of growing up and uh, development for a child. Uh, unfortunately, we're inundated with academics and sports and all these other important things that we don't always get a chance to be creative um, and use our imagination. And so by learning how to be creative and use that creativity in a constructive way, we not only can create works of art or sing or play music or you know, write great stories, but we also get an opportunity to we learn about uh, problem solving and creative thinking. And so I think it's important to get uh, kids get involved with the arts to really keep that uh, creative source in the forefront. Sounds great. What do you teach kids about the psychology and techniques behind the art that they're making? In fact, I just did a comic book class where um, we learned about how the brain can play tricks on you. Really drawing what you see, not what you think you see. Uh, lines in our brain are always perpendicular. That's just the way our brain thinks. Uh, but in, actual, in all actuality, lines do run parallel, or they run at different angles. So I have to explain to kids sometimes that you have to really look at what you're drawing and really think, okay, is this really the way it looks? Because a lot of times kids will draw things and it looks nothing like what the, the subject is because their brain is telling them one thing, or the side of their brain is telling them one thing, and they're drawing them out. Now that we've gotten some creative ideas and understand the science behind art, let's take a look at today's craft. Welcome to the segment we're calling Stay at Home STEAM Activities. We're here at the Iowa State Extension Video Studio to share with you fun and exciting science, technology, engineering, art, and math activities and experiments that you can try safely in your very own home. Today I'm joined by Ava. Ava will be helping me explain today's fun activity. So go ahead and find a trusted adult and let's get started. Today we'll be crafting fun themed decorations using paper. First, we'll show you how to make colorful patterns on the paper using food coloring. Then you will learn to fold and cut the paper into interesting shapes. For today's experiments, you will need milk, dish soap, paper, scissors, string, and adhesive such as tape, food coloring, straws, measuring cups, and a sheet pan, water, and corn syrup. Let's get started. For our design, we'll be using milk, soap, and food coloring to make a marble-like pattern. First, pour a thin layer of milk onto your sheet pan.
Then, put the soap on the tip of your finger and lightly touch the drops of food coloring. Finally, place a sheet of paper on top of your design and set it to the side to dry. Our second paper coloring technique uses bubbles to transfer food dye onto paper. If you don't have your own bubble solution, you can make some using soap, water, and corn syrup. First, mix three cups of water with one half cup of soap, being careful not to make any bubbles. Next, add one quarter cup of corn syrup to the mixture and mix well. Now, mix your bubble solution with food coloring and use a straw to blow bubbles onto your paper. Now that we've customized our paper and given it time to dry, we're going to cut it into different shapes. We'll begin by cutting our paper into a pumpkin shape. First, fold your paper in half and in half again, alternating directions. Now, with the help of a trusted adult, you can cut the paper as shown. We'll be revealing our designs and explaining the science behind our experiment when we return. Did you know the art of paper marbling originated in Japan 900 years ago? We can learn about how this unique art form started from fascinating stories passed on in Japan. These stories tell us that this type of art was created by accident when someone dropped a painting into water and decided to place a paper on top of the floating ink and it looked super cool. A lucky accident, just like many great discoveries. Welcome back to Full Steam Ahead with Team Neutrino, brought to you in partnership by the Ames Public Library. My name is Laura Lee, and I'm here at the Ames Public Library to showcase the incredibly fun science, technology, engineering, art, and math books you can find here. Today we'll be looking at one of my personal favorites, 500 Kids Art Ideas, inspiring projects for fostering creativity and self-expression by Gavin Andrews. This awesome do-it-yourself book is a fantastic way to learn new art techniques. In fact, you can learn from 500 unique ideas, from paint projects to recycling. That's a lot of art. You can enjoy 500 Kids Art Ideas, inspiring projects for fostering creativity and self-expression today, right here at the Ames Public Library, along with thousands of other educational titles and fun weekly events you and your whole family can enjoy. Now back to the show. Grab your paper that we folded and cut earlier. Now, unfold it to reveal the design. It looks great! Add a stem to your shape, and it's a pumpkin. Do you see how the paper has been cut into a symmetrical shape? By folding the paper before cutting it, we make sure our shape looks the same on both sides. Symmetry can be used in many different ways in art and all aspects of steam. The different ways we colored our paper can also be explained through steam concepts. When we used milk and soap, the fat and protein in the milk reacted with the soap to cause movement, swirling around our food coloring in a fancy design. 
Soap is also surfactant, which means it reduces the surface tension of the water in milk, assisting with the movement of color. The second method we use to customize your paper also involves surface tension. The soap in the bubble solution decreases the naturally high surface tension of water. High surface tension means water always wants to have the least amount of surface area. Bubbles have the same property, which is why they are almost always spheres. Unless something is pushing or pulling on a bubble, it will become a sphere shape. The soap decreases the surface tension of the mixture, allowing bubbles to form and separate from their solution, whereas bubbles made of just water don't last on their own. Now that we've learned the science behind how these awesome patterns are made, let's decorate with our shapes. Take some string and tape your creation onto it. Now you can show off what you made wherever you want. If you enjoyed this stay-at-home STEAM activity, you can find more simple and engaging tutorials online. Visit www.youtube.com slash teamneutrino for nearly two hours of free stay-at-home STEAM lessons. From do-it-yourself elephant's toothpaste to Team Neutrino's incredible Rube Goldman machine, you're bound to find something fun you can do. So what are you waiting for? See you there! Did you know? Nowadays, the Olympics are a fun event to watch on television where athletes compete in everything from swimming to running. But originally, painting a picture could win you a gold medal. For over 30 years, medals were awarded for painting, sculpting, music, architecture, and literature. Olympic athletes were actually required to participate in the arts to qualify for the Olympics in the first place. Bet you never expected that! Thank you for joining us for this installment of Full Steam Ahead with Team Neutrino. Today we learned about art, from paper marbling to how to be creative at home. We explored the Occugon Center for the Arts, a fun place here in Story County that you can visit with a trusted adult. And we learned to make our very own paper decorations. Next week, join us as we explore architecture in our local community. See you there! watching Full Steam Ahead with Team Neutrino. We hope our show inspires you to continue to innovate and design while enjoying the fantastic and fun opportunities Story County has to offer. See you next time!